Do you think anything is possible inside of Sin City, Las Vegas? I believe what God is doing is that he's bringing people together under the spirit of unity to display that anything and everything is possible through him. This is Las Vegas United. Well, hello and welcome to Las Vegas United. I have the pleasure of being your host, Dada Presley, and I want to welcome you. If you're watching from Keen 17, we welcome you. If you're watching from YouTube, we welcome you. Now, here's a part. If you are watching from YouTube, do me a huge favor. Make sure you subscribe. Okay, subscribe. And then also hit that bell so that way whenever we go live, you receive a notification so you can tune in and see what's going on inside of your city. This is your city. Wouldn't you, don't you want to know what's going on? It's kind of like at your house, right? When something's going on at your house, you want to know. Inside of your city, we want you to know what's going on and how God is doing extraordinary things. Speaking of extraordinary things, I want to introduce our guest tonight, Senior Chaplain Tai Chu. Man, how are you doing? Bro, you are a dear friend of mine. You and your wife mean so much. I want to thank you, bro, for being here. Thank you, daughter, for inviting me. It's an honor to be here. Uh, like you said, I, I've known you and Annabelle. Been amazed at your growth and maturity in the Lord. It just uh, warms my heart. Oh man! To think that we had a minimal part in it. Huge, huge part. If anybody knows you and your wife, poured into me and my wife when we needed it the most. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest part. And that's why, like, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I, this is this is what you've done for the longest, right? Mm -hmm. But before we even get into that, right? I know you very well, right? I know the fingertip push-ups, <laughs> right? I <laughs> I know the getting the biggest guy in the room and putting him in the chair and and picking him up in the chair <laughs> with just the fingers of four people. Like I know all of that. <laughs> I know all of that. I know the heart. I know the man. But I would like for our viewers to know. Who Tai Chu is. Mm. You know, as I approach my 80th year on this earth, whew, uh, and, and I Glory reflect, for longevity. <laughs> yeah. And I re reflect on the uh, circumstances and experiences I've uh, been uh, allowed to have mm. by my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and God himself, who uh, didn't, I never really thought about the influence that he had in my life mm. uh, until I met Sharon mm. a little over 20 years ago. And she brought a different perspective mm. to how I should look at life mm. and how we should look at life together. Mm. Because I, I came away from two, uh, I, I can't say they were failed marriages, but they weren't equally yoked marriages. Mm. And uh, God allowed Sharon to meet me, and I can honestly say, set me straight. <laughs> I mean, it was it was God in the background guiding us, loving mm. us. I give my wife a, a lot of credit for where I am today. Yeah, it, that's that's good, and also too, um, you were a fighter, fighter for how for how many years again? I started my fire service career late in life at age 30 mm -hmm. and put in 29 and a half years, uh, retired in November of 2004, mm -hmm. rank of captain for 20 of those years. Right. And uh, being in the fire service, uh, not only did it teach me a lot about life and how to relate to people, mm -hmm. uh, the community to which I am sworn to serve, but also how I handle myself and others beyond the job. Right. And uh, I've seen a lot of terrible things, mm -hmm. but uh, even in my personal life, having to not be so emotionally involved with mm -hmm. the situation, but to detach myself and say, I have a job to do, right. and set aside the emotion uh, of, of that human contact mm. and take care of business. Yeah. Because a majority of those calls in my fire service were medically related. Right. And it, it, just because we're called fire uh, fires doesn't mean we're fighting fire every day. Yes. Sure, we do have fires 
uh, but more often than not, we are attending to medical needs mm -hmm. of the community. So there's a lot more emotion involved in your being of service. Right. And uh, a lot of stresses can occur because not every medical emergency has a positive outcome. Mm. And not every fire-related call has a positive outcome. Right. And uh, those kinds of stresses is what drives me as a chaplain for Las Vegas Fire and Rescue mm -hmm. to do better to allay the fears, anxieties, mm -hmm. and doubts that younger firefighters coming into uh, the service uh, will face. Right. There's no doubt that they will face, but they need to be able to endure those situations right. and circumstances because yeah. I want them to enjoy retirement as I am doing. Right. 20 years in retirement. Come on now. And uh, You look good. You know, I consider myself blessed and highly favored. Come on now. You know, coming a, uh, away from a year ago, mm -hmm. uh, open heart surgery, yes. quadruple bypass, yep. and Part of that recovery process is feeling the prayers of those who l know me and love me mm -hmm. and extended their concerns for me. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say that prayer can be felt physically. Mm. The prayers of others can be felt physically. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. No, absolutely. How absolutely. God moves. Yeah. yeah, and so so here's a part too, is that um, you were a firefighter for 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 all those many years, because I, I I don't I want I want our viewers to to know, like when they see a fire truck going down the street, when they see EMR going down the street, what is going on for those those members that are serving our city during times like that? So I can speak uh, because I've worked closely with ambulance companies. Mm -hmm as well as the fire service and fire personnel. The mindset, that which you asked me about, whatever first responder uh, unit you are responding on, the mindset is I have to get there from point A, my start point, to where the emergency is, point yes. B, as quickly as I can, mm -hmm. as safely as I can, mm -hmm. and Take into account along the way, what am I responding to? Mm -hmm. Who am I responding to? Mm -hmm. And base my actions at the end point, base it on all my previous knowledge, experience, and education. Right. Utilize the tools that God has gifted me. Mm -hmm. And set aside my personal emotions, which I'll discuss in a minute, mm -hmm. aside and operate professionally. Uh, I don't care if you're assigned an ambulance, a rescue unit, a fire engine, a fire truck uh, mm -hmm. unit. The call en route is filled with we as a crew, mm -hmm. whether it's two people or four people mm -hmm. or even three-man crew, uh, we have to work together. Yes, We each have a role to play and we have to work in unity. And that's the one thing that, as a chaplain, mm -hmm. I try to express to the mm -hmm. fire uh, personnel, mm -hmm. men and women on the floor, mm -hmm. is there has to be crew integrity, mm -hmm. meaning that everyone has to know their job yes. and be able to work alongside the other person mm -hmm. in as efficient a manner as possible, yeah. setting aside their own personal feelings mm. because the, the patient is the focus. Mm. The fire call is the focus. Mm. And uh, for 30 years, for, for 29 and a half years online, I used to, not that I developed it, but we had a departmental program mm. and, and fire service still does this today. Mm. today. Uh, I used to conduct what we call a pick after every call, mm. every call, no matter how minor, no matter how involved and, and complex. It's called a pick, mm. post-incident critique, mm. wherein 
after the call, we did cleaned up, make sure our gear is right, but take the time to sit down and say, how did you do? Mm. What could you have done that might have been better mm. or correct it mm. and uh, make it run smooth the next time we do it? Because we will have this call again. Mm. We don't just sit, have a one and done call. Right. And, and we'll see that same kind of fire, mm. kind of medical mm. call time and time again over a long period of time. It's interesting because like you're describing it and it, it sounds like ministry. We all as a body are coming together saying, hey, we have a mission. We need to we need to do this right here. If it's to go and help somebody, if it's go to to pull somebody out of where they are, right? Yeah. If it's like, hey, we gotta we need to go and, and meet this person. We need to meet this need. We need to put out this fire in their life. Yeah. Right? And we're going together and like you said, in order to do it, we have to operate with integrity and unity. Like it literally, when I when you were saying, I'm just like, I just, I just saw like that, just members of a, the church, big C, right, saying we're going to come together, we're going to rally, and we're going to come right here, mm -hmm. right. And that you said, hey, how you feel about a person, emotion, what you think, and emotion, like that stuff, put that stuff to the side because this need. Yeah. needs to be done right it's right. just like if we if we were to look at christ yeah. right i mean you think i'm pretty sure at some point he may have been upset about some things right but could we but the one thing is that we do know he was moved with compassion yes. right we knew that there were some things that upset him especially when he came in flipping the tables over tables over inside of the temple right he's like hey you got this is supposed to be my father's house is supposed to be a, a house of prayer and you made it a den of thieves yes. right so you, you he have all of this and it's like hey it, it, it does take the emotions to do it, right? It does, but it takes the heart to do it. And I think that's where the emotions aspects comes in, where you're like, hey, I'm going to talk about the emotional aspect. Right. Could you talk about that just for a, one quick moment? The emotional aspect is tied in with the moral aspect mm. because the calls, the patients that uh, firefighters respond to, mm -hmm. they can't help but identify this could be my mom, this could be my dad, this could be my sister, my brother, my daughter, my son, mm. when they go on a call. And I don't care how many years you put into the job, mm. you go and, and uh, personally, and I can speak for a lot of the members of the fire service, mm -hmm. juvenile calls mm. hit us the hardest because we're talking about God's child. Yes. Not not only a parent's child, but yes. this is God's child. And the potential for them, uh, the potential they have mm. weighs on our being able Ooh. to do the best we can wow. to uh, mitigate their injury, their illness. Mm. And uh, But that is the emotional side of the fire service. Mm -hmm. And all first responders, I don't care if it's law enforcement or ambulance. Yeah patient care, mm -hmm. transport, or, or the fire service. Mm -hmm. uh, first responders are affected by who they respond to mm -hmm. and how they respond because mm -hmm. this could be something that relates to them personally. Right. And that's one of the dangers that we as chaplains and our chaplaincy uh, core within mm -hmm. the department mm -hmm. try to uh, help mitigate insofar as talking to the personnel to say, don't be afraid to share your hesitations mm. or your doubts mm. about doing the job because right. of because of that crew integrity. Right. Can't have you hold back for any reason. Mm -hmm. You should be able to open up, be able to talk to each other, mm -hmm. and if you are hesitant about that, find some resource which we as chaplains are uh, part of the peer support yes. system for the department that provide those resources, counseling, uh, and other resources mm -hmm. that, that help a person stay in the job. Yeah, no. I ready would... to do the job. Um, but I'm proud of the fact that we have chaplains for as part of the peer support because. Mm -hmm. Uh, some individuals, I'm not saying that every individual, but there are some individuals who say, I, I don't feel comfortable talking to a peer. Mm. 
mm-hmm. my own in uniform right. personnel, yeah. no matter what rank, because it, it, back in the day, and it still applies, there were three forms of communication telephone, television, and telefirefighter. Mm. Word gets out fast when they find out someone has a, a weakness mm. or something that they admit they, they have a problem with. Right, right, right. It could be marital problems, could be drug-related, alcohol-related, mm. emotions uh, uh, gone sideways. But people feel get, they get shunned mm. because of what the, 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 the actual human mm-hmm. reactions right. to many of these conditions. Yeah. And so they feel more comfortable talking to a chaplain, right. an outsider, yeah. an insider, but yet an outsider. Yeah. Because, you know, we are sworn to confidentiality, mm-hmm. and we, we uphold that because uh, we want the person, the individual, to be treated humanely and non-judgmentally. Yeah. I want, that's what I want to talk about for the next couple of moments as well, is, is the chaplaincy program for Las Vegas Fire and Rescue. Tell us, uh, tell our viewers about that. Like, what does it look like right now for the integration of chaplains inside of the Las Vegas Fire and Rescue? One has to, first of all, be vetted Mm. to be a volunteer uh, chaplain, Mm. but also part of the uh, qualification or interview process is to find out, does the individual have a knowledge of what firefighter lifestyle is all about. Mm. The fact that these individuals who have trained, uh, worked hard to qualify themselves right. to become uh, a recruit, to go through six months of very hard boot camp, if mm. you will, mm. uh, get through that process and then endure another 12 to 18 months of probationary mm. To prove themselves. This is the firefighters. This is the firefighters. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, from day one, there are stresses. Absolutely. And uh, throughout their academy, throughout probation, uh, and, and getting into their career, mm. chaplains uh, need to oversee and understand the mindset mm. that Firefighting is a uh, unique profession, yes. and it has its very unique stresses mm. that they have to be compassionate about. Mm. It's not like any other job uh, out there, uh, but like the medical field in general, doctors and nurses have their own unique stresses yes. in the hospital yes. setting, clinical setting. Law enforcement has their unique set of stresses. Uh, And chaplains for the fire service have to recognize, understand, and be able to cope Mm -hmm. with those unique stresses of fire service Mm -hmm. Uh, and merge with that, Mm -hmm. being compassionate with the male aspect and the female aspect Mm -hmm. as they approach the job. Right, right, right. And in addition to that, from being single individuals to the family dynamic, Mm -hmm. how that affects their life. Right. Because uh, I've always said, don't take what happens at the job, which can be bad Mm -hmm. at times, and take it home. Right. Because it just complicates your home life if you take the job home. Yeah, absolutely. And that happens very often in the fire service Mm -hmm. because... uh, the firefighters for Las Vegas Fire and Rescue and several other jurisdictions, they work 48-hour mm. shifts, 48 hours straight. And, and a lot of the stations, whether it's Clark County, North Las Vegas, uh, Henderson, Boulder mm. City, Las Vegas Fire and Rescue, mm. whatever station you work at has its unique response modes. Yeah. A lot of freeway calls, yeah. accidents, yeah. a lot of residential uh, medical calls, a lot of commercial uh, responses, alarms, and, and the such. Right. And uh, so there's no real 
quiet stations yeah. in the system. <laughs> right. But the, the chaplain has to recognize those stressors. Yeah. The job, mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. the impact to their personal life and their their professional life. Yeah. And also too, speaking you, you talked about the chaplains being there for the uh, for the professional aspect of their of their of their life, but also to the personal aspect yes. of their life. There was something that occurred at Las Vegas Fire Rescue with a family member. And the chaplaincy uh, uh, corps was able to rally around this family during a time when they needed most. And this is where prayer comes in. This is where you said prayers can be felt yeah. in the physical form. Tell yeah. us about this, this prayer being felt for this family. Yeah. Um, about a month ago, one of our chief officer's uh, child had a uh, medical emergency, mm -hmm. three-and-a-half-year-old child, mm -hmm. and it, it got complicated mm -hmm. early on. And she uh, uh, was arrested, mm -hmm. and the medical personnel and the fire personnel were able to uh, bring her back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the timing wasn't the best, but yet they they brought her back and to date uh, she has recovered from that mm. medical emergency. Come on, praise God! But she is looking forward to rehab mm. uh, and, and and very serious rehab because for for a child, any yeah. child, uh, having additional surgeries mm -hmm. to to mitigate uh, her condition mm -hmm. uh, was required, and she's going to need that therapy to. Uh, grow up to be a viable yeah. uh, woman uh, uh, of God because yeah. I know the parents are, are very grounded in their faith mm. and for for the chaplains to rally around this situation mm. as we would with any member mm. of, of the, the fire family uh, and their extended families yes. you know is something that chaplains would do just being at the hospital for them mm. and for others in the hospital mm has been uh, a, a very self-fulfilling and, and uh, emotionally satisfying experience for each and every chaplain that, that uh, is in, has been involved. Yeah. Been Being present for, yeah. for this individual's family and for the, the, the little girl herself. Yeah. And to be taking a break mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the break room and have other families present and have us turn around and say, can we pray for your family mm. as well? Because we're Come here. On. Yes. And they're just blown away saying, a absolutely they welcome it. Yeah. So being a chaplain is is more than just being a fire chaplain. Mm. We're just being servants for God. Come on. And uh, being in the community yes. to do what we do, have been trained to do. The chaplain corps there at Las Vegas Fire Rescue has, has been, has had a presence at the hospital pretty, pretty much, much, pretty every, much day. every day early on for sure i've gotten an update just this morning yes and uh we will continue to uh, monitor mm. her progress yes because it's always positive mm. and and mm. we see that every day yeah and uh, to see her alert mm. and being a little three and a half year old come on now. wanting to go home yes and i said well it's gonna we have to, a lot of work to do yeah but uh, to see her parents smiling and, and yes. happy to see her progress. I mean, yeah, because you think it's, it's the prayers over the people that serve our city. Absolutely. It's the prayers over this girl yeah. that has brought her to this place. Exactly. Where now God has been like, yeah. I've been working. Yeah. I've been working and I've, been, I've heard all the prayers. No prayer has been in vain. Yeah. And you think the, the, the weight of the prayers has been, is on her. Mm. to bring this healing to her. Yeah. This is so good, man. Yeah. Hey, Chaplain, Senior Chaplain Ty, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming up on here. But before we leave, can you tell our viewers how they can, uh, number one, become a chaplain, right? And then also, two, uh, what it would look like to become a Las Vegas Fire Rescue Chaplain as well? Becoming a chaplain is uh, twice a year mm. in, in the months of April and uh, October, mm. uh, Messages of Faith Ministries conducts 
uh, a, a chaplaincy, basic chaplaincy training yes. program. And it, it involves three weekends, a commitment of three uh, weekends. That, and uh, they take applications in late March, mm -hmm. early April, and in late September, mm -hmm. early October. And uh, the, the, the main qualification for application is the desire to do more for God. Mm. And uh, it's it, and to have that your own in-house church sponsorship yes. to say we think this person would be a good chaplain. Yes. Out of that experience in basic training, uh, chaplains get a chance to say, what ministry should I, would I like to tie into? Mm -hmm. And and a lot of uh, community uh, chaplains who are have different ministries come in to give their half-hour spiel yes. uh, to say, if you're interested in doing this, that, or the other, uh, uh, consider it. Mm. And, and I am in that group. Right. So I, I present what fire chaplaincy is about, right. who I'm looking for, mm. and how they can become involved with yes. fire service chaplaincy. And Everybody goes through a background check. Mm -hmm. Everybody fills out a volunteer uh, uh, application mm -hmm. and gets uh, interviewed. Yes. And insofar as Las Vegas Fire and Rescue, uh, I'm always looking for people that will help mm -hmm. uh, with the fire chaplaincy. Yes. But I am also looking for people to help other jurisdictions. Come on. North Las Vegas, yes. Clark County, yes. Henderson, Boulder City. Yes. So that my uh, outlook for the fire service mm. is that uh, other jurisdictions enjoy having chaplains available to their yes. personnel. Oh, absolutely. That's the bottom line. Come on now. Yeah. Thank you for coming up on Las Vegas United. Well, thank you thank for you. inviting me. Oh. I, it's been a wonderful experience. No, absolutely, absolutely. Also, too, we thank you guys for tuning in to Las Vegas United. Hey, here's a part. As as it was said today, there is a, a weight in this far, as far as the weight of prayer, and prayer can be felt in the physical form. And which means that our first responders, Las Vegas Fire and Rescue, they may need your prayers. So when you see a, 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 a metro going down the street, when you see fire department going down the street, it doesn't matter if it's Boulder City, Henderson, North Las Vegas, the city, it doesn't matter. Send a prayer out for their safety, out for, the, for the, those that they're responding to as well. And here's the part. Let, let, our, let us, as followers of Christ, live a life of prayer. We pray you guys are blessed from today's uh, episode. God bless you. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Our show is hosted by Pastor Dada Presley of Connection Church LV. To learn more about him and his ministry, please visit myconnectionlv.org. The guest this week is Tai Chu from Chaplaincy, Nevada. For more information, visit chaplaincynevada.org. Thanks for watching our broadcast. Las Vegas United is produced by CTN Vegas. For more information about CTN Vegas and our show, please visit ctnvegas.com.